been a little while since we spoke. It was around extraction time. I mean, I loved the movie and I loved the action that you did in it, but there was no way of knowing how huge that movie was going to be on Netflix. Yeah. I mean, it, when we made the movie, we were just trying, as I think everyone does, to make a movie that we believed in and that we felt would be you know, exciting and entertaining to audiences. And we thought we had a pretty, you know, decent movie on our hands. And I, I still think that, but the response that we've gotten from audiences all over the world during the release and still was overwhelmingly positive and could never have expected it to be, um, I guess, so well received in such a short amount of time. Yeah. What was it like? Because you can tell you know, the Netflix is usually never going to release like exact numbers, although that's basically the number one movie on Netflix, um, I think, in history. Uh, but how quickly how quickly was like Scott Stuber or someone from Netflix calling you after a premiere to say, hey, we need to sit down and talk about doing another one? Uh, well, truthfully, the, there was talk of doing another one before we even finished shooting the first one. Um, you know, so there was always that rumble, you know, when we were making the movie, we never, we didn't take that seriously. We were trying to focus on making the best single movie possible, but there were rumblings of doing another one, you know, wh whether the story goes forward or backwards, they were trying to figure that out, but they kept us, Netflix has a very interesting process. They, they kind of, you know, at, at certain periods during, after the release date, you know, certain days they check in with you and, you know, they were very uh, excited, but also, you know, trying as we were to just uh, not get too overzealous with prediction of numbers, but they were like, you know, kind of eyebrow raising numbers of like, this could really go, you know, really far, really fast. And then it did. And that kind of, I think, solidified the start of the, the um, you know, writing the next one, which Joe Russo was doing at this moment. Yeah, Joe told me that he was hard at work writing the screenplay. And he also told me that they were that you guys were aiming to shoot in the fall of this year. Uh, obviously, if things go well, is that still the case? Still the case, you know, uh, COVID pending. That's kind of everyone's little caveat, but we're we're moving forward on it as if we're, you know, we'll be shooting in the fall. We're still, you know, day, um, sorry, Joe is still finalizing the script. We're all excited to read, you know, I've read different iterations, but excited to read what he turns in. And um, yeah, we're, we're all looking forward to getting, getting back in the saddle and, and hopefully bringing in another action-packed fun adventure in the extraction universe. The, the thing that I'm curious about with you is uh, the action is so awesome in extraction and the way you use camera to tell the story to, to, to you know, to, to make these action set pieces so good. How, have you, how early on, like uh, right now, for example, are you already thinking, how are we gonna raise the bar? What are we gonna do in the sequel that we haven't done already? We talked about that extensively, and you know, truthfully, Steve, I'm always I walk around, uh, you know, my my house or, or walk around town looking for ways to do something fun or different with action. I kind of think as if there's a you know a camera behind my eyes all the time. Like, what would be an interesting way to capture this? Oh, that'd be cool. So I'm always cataloging and trying to think of different fun ways to capture action and different action set pieces that would be great. So Joe and I talked a lot about that, pitched some ideas, bounced them around, and you know. Where I'm just excited to the challenge because yeah, it is that is the, the the difficult thing, right? But the beauty of all these different great action films is they uh, challenge filmmakers and myself included to raise the bar. Like, how are we going to raise the bar when there's you know a lot of movies? Even since Extraction, a lot of movies have come out and been pushing the envelope, and we gotta we gotta keep push back. You know, we gotta just keep elevating the the level of action. I talk to Chad a lot about the John Wick series. And yeah. he's always like, you know, each of these movies and John Wick uh, has really done stuff. And I think he's both intimidated by and excited by what they get to do in John Wick. Um, I'm curious with Joe and the writing of this, the sequel screenplay or prequel, whatever it ends up being, I know you're not gonna tell me. Um, I'm curious yeah. how early on is he telling you what he's thinking about and you sort of already talking to him about the action and how much do you sort of have to wait until the whole thing is figured out before you can start, you know, breaking it down? It's a, it's a process. It's a happy medium. Early on, we, we talked a lot about set pieces that he wanted to design the story around, basically. So we know there's certain, certain places that we want to go, certain things that we want to happen in there. And then 
you know, what he has been doing over the past months is weaving a story in and around those action set pieces that then once, you know, once the script comes in and we look at them, then, you know, he's, he's going to have exciting, his job is to have an exciting read and to really hook those who are going to, you know, put up money for the movie or, you know, actors who want to join the movie. That's the number one goal of the screenwriter is to hook the reader and get people interested. So he's going to have super exciting action, which he always does. I'm excited to read it. But then the next step would be to get a hold of the script and go in there in detail and say, okay, for example, this, uh, you know, set piece takes place in a, you know, a, whatever, an African, um, you know, market or, a, you know, or a prison cell or wherever it is that you might find yourself. How do we take the specifics of that and make the action interesting, related to character, reveal things about the character, push this character, you know, whoever it is in ways maybe they haven't been pushed before, before to have, you know, elicit responses maybe you haven't seen before. And so that, that's where I, the, you know, the fun for me begins is once you get the template of the script and the story and the beats, all the beats that happen that, that tell the story, how do we enhance that with the action and really try to take the storytelling to the next level through physical action? When the movie is such a hit for Netflix um, and the whole world watches, how does that impact, for example, the, you talking to them about budget? The first movie was made at, at, at a price. And I'm curious if they're thinking, okay, well, this is a huge hit. Do you need more money to make the sequel like bigger or like, do you know what I mean? How does that negotiation work? Yeah. Well, I think in general, the, the main thing you got to remember is it's, it's show business. So in business, you know, if you got to keep your costs down so that your profits are high, right? So that no one is, is rushing out to the bank and say, let's triple the cost because it was, you know, because we can everyone's going to want to keep the, the budget down. Now, what the, the benefit of having a successful movie you know, is, at least in the past, has been, you know, say we were successful before, we want a little bit something extra here because we want to make it even better. And now you have a little bit of leverage saying, you know, we did this in the past, we're asking for something, and, you know, we delivered before, and you, your tr the trust that you will deliver again is a little higher so in general, they'll be willing to stretch a little bit more. But again, everyone's trying to, you know, trying to keep the the margins, in a, you know, it, for the, in the black so that you guys are making making money. Uh, Joe talks about how he's thinking about everything as like an extraction universe, how there could be a different movie focusing on another character, how it, it sort of ties in. Obviously, there's only one of you. Um, so how much are you looking at these extraction sequels or spinoffs or whatever it might be? Um, and how many of these things do you want to take on, you know, or is it just like, you know what I mean? How is that sort of working? I think Joe and Anthony and that whole Agbo team are brilliant in that kind of building upon the Marvel universe aspect where a lot of these films connect and, you know, intersect in their journeys with characters. They're kind of building on that model in this world, what we're calling the extraction universe. And there is a lot of opportunity to follow characters that people have, shown an affinity for and sounds like they want to know more about so my personal involvement i mean i would love to be as involved as possible but i i also don't want to be greedy there's a lot of other super talented filmmakers out there who would have very unique visions who are going to bring something new and fresh to the franchise that i would be excited to see as a fan you know i, I would you know hopefully we get to do the second one all of us the kind of the same team and, and really establish the franchise if you will and then from there I would love to see as, as a fan of cinema, what other young directors who can, again, push the level of action. I would love for people to, you know, as much as it's fun for people to appreciate extraction, maybe in a movie about, you know, Saji or Ovi or, or Nick, they can be like, that's what people are talking about now. That someone did something so incredible that this is now the standard that I, as a filmmaker and another, you know, another film have to try and keep, you know, climbing the ladder to, 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 give audiences the best kind of entertainment we can. I would imagine after the success of the first film, it's gonna be a hell of a lot easier to get whoever the hell you want in the sequel. Have you already started thinking <laughs> in, your, in your mind, I really want such and such to be in this movie? Oh, I mean, yes and no, because the, the, the big thing for me is always about story and character. And then whatever, you know, once we dive in and, and you know, Joe is finished with the script and we get a full picture of who, who that's gonna be and where, then, you know, I've got a catalog of those who I would love to work with from both an acting standpoint and an action standpoint and just some, you know, fresh faces. 
then we'll take we'll you know, take the script, take that catalog of uh, actors I'd like to work with, and, and try to as best we can fit them together, and hopefully have a new dynamic cast. You must have done a lot of meetings and met a lot of people that maybe you hadn't met because all of a sudden you delivered on this movie. So can you sort of talk about maybe um, are there other things that you're developing right now that are not extraction sequels or you know prequels um, that you are currently you know working on? Indeed. I mean, the, you know, I'm first and foremost a storyteller and a filmmaker and as, you know, as um, successful as Extraction was and as, as much as that got me in the room, so to speak, with other with other people, I'm, um, you know, I'm not just just solely relying on the Extraction universe to, to, to go through. I want to be as involved as possible, but I've got a lot of story ideas of my own that I've been developing the this time off in during COVID, I've spent a lot of time writing with my writing partner, Fernando Chin. So we're developing, you know, we've got a TV show that we're working with producers on pitching and we've got a, a feature that we've adapted and we've got another, you know, story that we're working on as well as other scripts that have come in. The doors have been opened because of extraction and gotten some really great scripts that we're trying to develop. So there are, there are many irons in the fire, so to speak, um, or to use the language of Joe Russo, a lot of frogs lined up on the starting line. So we'll see which one jumps jumps in the right direction first. Got it. So you think the next time you're directing a feature is Extraction in the fall, the, the sequel? Hard to say. Hard to say. Like I, I'd like it to be. Like that's that's been you know that would that if I had my druthers, that would be what I'd be doing. But you know it all depends, right? Like the the hard part right now is truthfully the the COVID of it all, and with the the scale and scope that we're trying to encompass with this story, that may put limitations on the execution of that. And so we have to decide, like, is it, do you change the story to make it happen when you want it to happen? Or do you, you know, kind of say, hey, this, this is a big enough, grand enough story that we want to wait until we can do this safely and inclusively of all the different, you know, places we want to travel. So it's, it's hard to say. That would be, that's the plan, but we have to be flexible.